Oh, and welcome back to the channel. Let me walk you through how I made this game. The setup for this is pretty simple. It's just a rigid body with a sprite and collision shape with gravity for it turned off originally. Once the player presses space, uh, we turn the gravity back on and set the setup variable to false to prevent the player from moving the ball once it's falling. Here we also set up a custom physics material with a bounce of 4 and set friction to 0 to make sure the ball doesn't lose inertia on collisions. Our movement code involves setting a direction variable to the difference between the integer values of our right and left input functions, which will give us a value between negative 1 and 1, depending on what combination of buttons we pressed. We then set the linear velocity to a vector 2 of movement speed times direction and 0 since we don't deal with coordinates in rigid bodies directly. The shapes that we are colliding with are static bodies with a sprite and a collision shape. We add a simple HP counter with an export variable max hits that will allow us to change the HP of individual shapes while making levels. We then write a hit function for the shape which we will call from the pinball node we add a label on top of the shape which will show the shape's HP and update on every hit. We put this label inside of a node 2D since control or green nodes don't have a rotation property and rotate the label right side up by subtracting the static body's rotation from the rotation of the node 2D. In order to track collisions, we first need to turn on contact monitor in our rigid body and set contacts reported to 1. In code, we check if our colliding body's array is non-empty and then check if the colliding body is in group shape, which we should set for every destructible shape that has a hit function. We then make sure to call the hit function on the shape and we have our collision detection. Next up is the game node script. It will be shared among all levels, so there are a couple of export variables we will need to be accessible in the visual editor that will keep track of the game state. Shapes remaining, which we will set originally to however many shapes we've placed in a level, as well as the next level variable, which will hold the resource path to the level we should switch to after the player has completed the current level. Here we also add a shape destroyed function which we'll call from destroyed shapes before queue freeing them by calling get parent shape destroyed. This function will decrement the shape's remaining variable and once that reaches zero, our win condition is triggered. The last thing we need to do here is to be able to respawn the pinball once it drops. We create a pinball dropped function in the game node script that will be called from within inside of the pinball once that reaches a certain y coordinate. We also load the pinball scene into a variable and, and put the first pinball we have on screen into a non-ready variable to use it in the pinball dropped function. So on pinball dropped then, we queue free the pinball, instance a new pinball into that variable, set its position to wherever we want to spawn it, and add it as child. We make sure to call this function from the pinball node and our game mechanics are complete. That's it. The link to the game is in the video description. Thanks for watching and have a good day.